Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to talk about something controversial. No, it's not the U.S. presidential election and Russian hacking, but close. We're going to talk about stepper motor smoothing. Yes, that topic. I know you've all wanted to kind of put that under the carpet and forget about it, but it's here and we're going to talk about it today. Now, I'm going to qualify this a little bit for you EEs out there, which I know I'm going to get hate mail, and that's okay. Um, I, you know, I'm going to generalize this for you know more of a layman. Now, this is going to be a bit of an intermediate discussion, uh, but you know I'm going to kind of gloss over a few things, so there's going to be a little bit of magic here. But in, in general, kind of want to share the concepts of why you might or might not want to smooth your steppers, why it might work, why it might be just meta science. We'll investigate. So this is also going to be a two-part episode. I'll warn you of that up front. So in this episode, we're going to talk a little bit about how the stepper motors work, a uh, little bit of the theory of why this might be good or might be bad. And then in part two, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually hook this up. I'm going to put an oscilloscope on it, and we're going to see. But we'll we'll talk about that in a minute. Where I want to back up, you're probably saying, you know, most folks out there, unless you're a double E uh, or a triple E or a quadruple E, um, are saying, what is what is this stepper smoothing thing you're talking about, Joe? Well, I'll share it with you. So there's been a bit of debate on the internet, and we see this a lot in certain types of printers. For example, Delta printers, because um, the axes of a Delta printer don't move in a Cartesian plane, so you want, want them to be very precise in their movement because a movement in multiple axes uh, sort of amplify error, if you will. So overruns and things like that become a little bit more noticeable in, in a Delta printer. And yes, for you Delta printers, I know I'm kind of glossing this, but bear with me for a second. Um, However, even in Cartesian-based printers, uh, there's scalloping or salmoning that some people call it, uh, you know, happen because of the runout or the decay of the signal to the stepper motor. So a lot of them have added diode smoothing to this. So this is what we're going to talk about. So I went online and I put my money down and I, now this is going to get even more controversial. I bought the four, not the eight uh, diode smoothing. These were like 13 bucks for like four of them. They were super cheap. Now the eights were like 40 bucks. I don't know. The, the price just jumped crazy. So I figured I'm going to try four before I, you know, uh, fully commit, you know. So I and on the English breakfast. We have the chicken and the pig. I'm going to be the chicken. I'm going to be involved here. I'm not going to commit yet um, because I think eight diodes is committing. And I'm going to talk about that for a bit, but I've kind of drawn this out over here, and hopefully I can zoom in or you can see this, um, even though the lines are rather small. So uh, basically we have our diode configuration here, and I'll put this here because the package comes with um, basically a board with four diodes on it. It's kind of simple, and it does come with a little connector. Now, wankily enough, you know, all the stepper motors I have and all my CNC's, everything I have has, is basically this six wire configuration. They give me a four wire cable, so I don't know if that's any good, but that's what the connectors on here are. So I made an adapter, so I'll talk about that in a minute. Just kind of want to show what comes in the package, and then they give you a piece of heat shrink tubing, EP. Um, but for those that really don't understand or maybe are new to how stepper motors work, there's really two types, unipolar and bipolar. This is a bipolar, not to be confused with being bipolar, I guess, but this is a bipolar motor. So this has two phases to it, as we see up here, uh, and this is kind of important to kind of keep in mind. So we have one phase and two phase, and then we have a magnet in the middle. And by alternating pulses to these uh, coils, it spins this so you know one paul spins it two paul spins it two sort of i'm simplifying it so don't send me hate mail uh but you get the concept so i'm going to set this motor here then what you have is one of these guys it's a stepper motor driver i'm going to put it here down here at the bottom and what this guy does is send pulses up here to drive the this coil these coils up here i'm going to move this over here so you can kind of see this so this guy sends a pulse here moves it moves it uh, you know, partial step, this 
Okay, then sends another one here, moves it a full step, and this is why you have, you know, like 16 steps, 30 second steps, and all that kind of stuff, and you can kind of divide it up. Is, is that's how it's controlled. But we're not going to worry about that for the time being. We're just going to kind of keep this basic and say, all right, you know, we send a pulse here, motor turns, right? And we have two phases. So this is why you notice this configuration here. So you have two biased diodes here. So in other words, you have the cathode connected to the anode and again the cathode connected to the anode. And one might say electronically, well, that's just a straight wire because when this DC pulse comes up into here, what's going to happen, since it's a positive going pulse, it's going to be rejected by the cathode, but accepted by the anode, and it's going to run through up here, fire the coil. And the same on this one. Now, one of the things I want to talk about a little bit is, you notice there's only two of them. You say, but there's four wires, Joe. Well, basically, you know, you have you have a ground, then you have a hot, um, for simple terms. Um, so that's why you only need two sets of diodes. Now, here we have four diodes. So each one are biased in reverse to one another. Now, in the eight diode version, you just simply double this down. So um, you have, you know, diode, 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 diode in the same configuration, just two of them. Now, you might say, what's the difference? Well, what you're going to have here in this is these guys are going to take a lot of current because when this when ends up rejecting or passing the current, uh, it's going to generate heat. These will get fairly warm, so that's why I was kind of joking about the heat shrink tubing. Uh, these will get very warm. Uh, so if you have eight diodes, that's eight diodes, you know, it's double, you, you know, reducing the load on each diode by half by adding the diodes. Now, this also gets to the point of why do people believe this works? Well, uh, partly they believe it works or improves the operation of the motor because it reduces the voltage. Uh, because primarily these are current devices. And so by reducing the voltage kind of controls or um, affects the decay because the, the pieces you want, you want a very solid square wave going into this because you want the motor to start at a certain point, you want it to stop at a certain point. And so you want to have that, those fine edge cuts. And this is a little bit what the diode's giving it. Now the diode is also... Um, acting in a flyback fashion because the diodes can act in, in a what's called a braking fashion or a flyback fashion because a lot of because if you if you're familiar with electronic circuit design if you do a relay circuit you reverse bias a diode in that relay circuit because what happens when this motor or the the coil or uh, device de-energizes that magnetic field collapses and sends power back this is why if you spin a stepper motor, it actually acts like a generator. So if you move your 3D printer, uh, 3D printer's head or a CNC, uh, you notice the panel usually lights up because this is generating voltage. It's becoming a generator. And so if this has applied inertia to it, when it goes to stop, that, that collapsing field and inertia has to go somewhere. So what happens is it creates sort of a flyback current. In other words, it sends current back down or voltage back down. And so it kind of perpetuates its, its own running. And so it can maybe overshoot itself a little bit um, because of that. Or you get bad decay on the, the uh, square wave that's firing it. So what happens in this case is, you know, if there is reversed um, uh, energization here, so in other words, if this becomes hot coming back down this way, you know, it's going to be rejected by the cathode, but it's going to be accepted by the anode. And the second it makes it to this side, guess what? It's going to reverse itself. So it's going to now want to go or be able to return this way. So what's going to happen is the the diodes are going to take the brunt of that. And that's that's sort of where I think my personal opinion, the value is. I don't think it's in dropping the voltage. I think it's in basically the braking aspect of these diodes. Now, will we see this on the oscilloscope? I don't know. I, I, I've looked at a couple sites on the internet and they've shown some what I would consider yeah, some pretty interesting things. So I want to give this a try. Um, 
myself and see what I come out with with it. So I want to share a little bit of this. Now, what I've also done here to, to do this experiment, I've taken one of them, and again, for some reason, they give you sort of a little bit of a wanky cable. And so I've made up my own adapter. I've just soldered pins on here um, because you have to reverse these as you plug them in. And then what I did is I just took a regular stepper uh, connector and plugged it in. It they actually worked fit in here because it is four wires that actually go to one of these driver boards uh, on a CNC shield. And then what I did is I just soldered on the back here clips so I can attach my scope probes to them or to the back here easily because what I want to do is I want to measure. I want to see uh, do a couple different tests. One is to measure uh, before and after. So I'll put a scope probe here and measure the input signal from the, the control or the, from the um, stepper controller and then I'm going to measure the output after it hits the diode on a dual tray scope. I'm going to watch what happens there. I'm also going to watch what happens across both of these lines as they fire just on the inside and then I can also look what happens on the other side of both lines. So I'm going to run a couple different tests here and see how they they come out. Um, and in, in I share those results with you again in another video because this one's kind of running a bit long and I want to just kind of at first share with you guys um, the whole idea of smoothing a stepper. I'd also like to hear uh, down below if you guys smooth your steppers or not. I kind of think it's a little bit interesting. You know, a lot of folks claim, well, X and Y, it's a good idea, but, you know, the extruder or the Z is really not necessary because there's a load against both of those. So your, your Z has gravity pulling against it. So, you know, if there's going to be run out or inertia, I mean, gravity is going to pull against it. So I don't think you'll see a lot there. And the same thing with the extruder because, you know, you have the, the uh, filament running in there and you have that uh, pinion pressing against it and so there's you know there's a mechanical inertia dampening but you know again with the tarantula or the CR10 uh, with the bed moving back and forth and the head moving back and forth both of these things have inertia so they're not going to stop on a dime you know uh, the old adage matter in motion tends to stay in motion so it's going to want to recover some of that energy back into an electrical force which is going to be fed backwards so this is where i think the concept of a braking diode um, makes some sense in this line especially with the vast number of movements that this is making in in a back and forth and in a fashion now i'm not so sure that how productive this is going to be so for example if you were to do this on the cnc basically the cnc is is a continual linear motion uh, if you will. Well, I shouldn't say linear motion, but when I say linear, it, it has a constant velocity. So it's not typically, you know, going backwards. It's running out, circling, coming back. Where, uh, you know, uh, a 3D printer is laying down lines like this, so it's whipping back and forth across. So I think a little bit different uh, between the two of them with regards to if there's value. So I think where this comes into value is where you're running out, stopping, coming back, stopping, running out, stopping, coming back, stopping. You see what I'm kind of saying here? This that recovery of inertia that I think could be a little bit of a problem. Now, is this going to make a huge difference? No, I don't think so to be honest with you i think it will make some smaller differences um i think you could get maybe a little bit better finish uh with it because it's going to be maybe a little bit more accurate uh but i, I don't really know and i'm really not sure how to totally measure the physical aspects of this this is why i'm going to simply focus on the electrical aspects of it and then after that video maybe we'll do a third one depending upon the comments i get from this video and the um what i'm going to call the oscilloscope video in the second one so anyways i'll have links to these down below if you're interested in following along with the experiment um not a lot of money it's kind of fun kind of interesting maybe it's good maybe it's not and uh but anyways it'll be there so swag shop will be up there don't forget the subscribe button hit me up in the comments below if you're running smoothers if you think it's a good idea bad idea i'm sort of right now at this video sort of a bit agnostic i want to explore it myself um and hey you guys can come along for the ride cheers see you in the next video Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.